you know, I worked in government for over 45 years. And along the way, I have accumulated career milestone. First, as a lawyer in the Supreme Court, as an assistant chief counsel in the Department of Justice, as presiding justice of the Sandigan Bayan, and by an expected turn of event as the 24th and the only female chief justice of the Philippines. It was a steady but gradual climb from one position to another. Since uh, this is uh, a celebration of uh, Women's Month, I would like to focus on the achievement that I, I was able to, uh, to reach when I was the Associate Justice of the Supreme Court and later on the Chief Justice. I was given an award by the International Association of Women Judges for advocating the um, goal of the International Women Judges Association of eliminating gender bias and for my work in instilling gender responsiveness in the Philippine judiciary. I was also given recognition for my work as chairperson of the Committee on Family Courts and Juvenile Concerns which was responsible for the organization of statutory family courts, which were created as early as 1997. I had a golden opportunity to do that for a period of nine years when I was president of the Philippine Women Judges Association. I saw to it that the Philippine Women Judges Association consistently hold convention seminars every year where judges and justices are um, made abreast of the recent developments in law, court procedure, and jurisprudence. I also made sure that our women judges are, are able to interact with our colleagues in the International Community of Women Judges. The most significant barrier to female leadership comes from within the woman herself. This is not so much a problem at this time and age because equal opportunities are available in employment and labor in all aspects of our human endeavors between men and women. Unlike some 40 years ago, where I experienced how women are discriminated, especially in the practice of the legal profession. Right after the bar exam, I applied for a um, position in one of the big law firms in the Philippines. And the only question of the interviewer that I have not forgotten up to this time is whether or not I have any plan of getting married soon. And he followed that up, that up with a statement that they only have one lawyer in their legal office and that that woman which she pointed he pointed to to me was on the family way and according to the interviewer she was not rendering legal or litigation work but only administrative work now uh, the turning point in my career was when they decided to call me, to call, ask me to report to the law firm after they have waited for the results of the bar examinations to come out. And lo and behold, the schedule of my appointment was my wedding day. So I never reported to that law firm 
and continued with my work at the time, which was in the Supreme Court. I don't think women lawyers will have the same experience now. Um, there are a lot of women lawyers in big law firms nowadays, and in the um, judiciary, 50% of judges and justices are now women. So what I can say is that uh, the barrier to female leadership is the lack of self-confidence, the reluctance to assume uh, responsibility, and the lack of preparedness Women should strive for excellence. Mediocrity is the root cause of a lackluster career. Being obsessed or focused on your self-interest will not give you lasting rewards. You should observe faithfully the lawyer's oath that you have taken when you were admitted to the bar. Always remember that lawyers are officers of the court tasked with high responsibilities in the administration of justice. Female leaders should go out of their comfort zones. They should keep abreast in the latest development in the practice of their profession. The advancement in information and communication technology is moving at a very fast pace. There is an increasing trend in globalization, not only in commerce, business, and other areas of human affairs, but also in law and court procedure. You should not be left behind in antiquated ideas and norms. The practice of law is a never-ending process of learning and scholarship. The discrimination against women is not simply rooted in sex or gender. Women are discriminated upon because of their lack of knowledge of their fundamental human rights under the law and the constitution. They're not being able to avail of opportunities that will make them productive members of society and for their not being able to become financially or economically independent. In other words, women empowerment through education, capability building, and skills development is the key to solving the problem of uh, discrimination against women and also violence against women.